That's why I brought it up. That's why I, 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 I thought I said, "Damn, Ryan was talking about this shit." He, he was like, "When you, oh man." So t- tell the, me about that. Tell me this, about this. Look, this the man eleven of the show right here. This to bring them down, bring them towers down. I'm Ooh. tower number seven. So look, yeah. in the West Coast, they don't they follow the oral tradition hard. Uh huh. So the the OGs got to okay certain moves before the YGs move. So we've been talking to OGs. Um, we've been using different OGs in the from the block that know what's going on to go talk to the other OGs and tell them how the enemy tricked us, turned us against each other, sicked us on each other like ravenous pit bulls, and we've been fighting each other, believing what the enemy misled us into doing. And it's been sh- a shock to the conscience of a lot of the young brothers that have been putting in work. Mm. So when they start realizing how the trick was ran on us, the kind game to turn us against each other, they didn't want no more parts of killing us because we need each other to fight them off. Right, right. So now the OGs and the YGs out West, they saying it's on, it's ready. We ready. And if you don't know how the West Coast ride, don't go out there and F around and find out. They not playing. They dead serious. Do not finna come with the, like, we caught them in the um, Rodney King riots, police dressing up like gangbangers to start the wars back up to keep mm. us fighting each other. We caught them. It is not a secret. Right? So now we able to produce enough evidence to walk the youngsters through what's been going on to turn us against each other. And they not buying it. They cut from a different cloth for a reason. Right, right. Oh yeah. So now Kendrick brought it to the public domain. Mm-hmm. They can't come out in the unity to show a unity and turn the unity key into all tribes understand the nature of the return mm-hmm. and the restoration of the clans across the land. Mm-hmm. When the West Coast came out with that show of unity, that was a message to the Midwest and to the East and the Southeast and to the South. Mm-hmm. Y'all ready? We ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you go back and listen to what Kendrick said, he said, we unified now, we ready. Oh, yeah. What they ready for? Uh, <laughs> that, that, was, uh, that was a beautiful thing to see right there, Ryan. <laughs> that, that, was a mon- that was a monumental milestone for us as a unified front against the colonizers. Yeah. And it's funny, the person he's battling against, he's... So even if Drake just just being the fall guy. He playing the part in order for us to pay attention to the stellar alignment so we could see what spirit is moving the humans to do on Earth. Mm -hmm. Indeed. You know, so somebody had to be the bad guy. Yeah. So Drake Drake took on the bad guy. He took on that role. Well, because Kendrick had to be the good guy. He had to be the one the knight in shining armor that comes through and slays the dragon for the princess. Mm-hmm. Who's the princess? Just about to ask that. Who's the princess? <laughs> he said, we ain't been right since who died? Who he said? He said Nipsey and he said Kobe. Right, 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 right. All right. And the princess is Laura London. Mm. Because Laura London was the one who was riding a white horse in the photographs with Nipsey. So in order for Nipsey um, legacy to be solidified, one of his brethren had to stand up in order to solidify the legacy by confirmation. Mm. This they they reenacting an ancient story called the. Uh, It's called the Holy Drama. It's the story of the prince rising to power in the Osirian resurrection. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you see it play out 
in one genre is playing out somewhere else too. It's playing out in the political arena with different characters using the different format, but it's the same story being told. Mm-hmm. They finally starting to leak the fact that this Joe Biden stuff is deep fake on the re- mainstream news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we've been talking about it, what, three years on your show? Yeah, no, definitely. About three years. <laughs> so yeah. now they just not starting to leak it out. What make them start leaking it now? At the same time, they showing this LA unity. Right. In the mainstream media, this is this is the they setting the stage for the grand finale. Bring down the towers. Do you know the uh CIA code name for the uh twin towers was called the Gemini Project? Mm. <laughs> mm. no, damn, bro. Going in, <laughs> Look, it's called the Gemini Project. <clears throat> it was set for September 11th, but it's really 7 11 because Sep means seven. Uh-huh. Right? So we got uh, the unknown tower is tower number seven. They didn't get hit by a plane, but it still fell. Uh-huh. Right? So, in the midst of what looked like two towers falling, you seeing two towers rising. So you're looking at a political move and a uh, entertainment move that's parallel in the movements of the tribes. Mm-hmm. Following mm-hmm. the the what they call the Gemini Code. Mm-hmm. I think it was a movie called The Gemini Man. It was, yeah. yeah. And it was some futuristic shit, right? It was something about some futuristic stuff. We in the future now from where we was when we was babies. Mm -hmm. We've arrived in the future of the child that was born when we was babies. Mm -hmm. We adults now. (laughs) We didn't arrive in the future as babies, though. We rose rose into the future as adults. We we got here. Mm Mm-hmm. The future is when the new age begins. Mm-hmm. It's on the flip side of the Mahurta, but who's going to see the Mahurta when it's coming and who's going to sound the alarm and let the people know? Because that's between two pillars. Mm. Right? So it opens up a gateway to the center of the universe for Prime Creator to send source codes in to be uh, filtered through the women using the Schumann resonance and the solar flares. And the answers coming in the UV in order to adjust the genetics of the child because the prayers of the women is answered through the womb. Mm-hmm. Right? So when the child becomes next generation, these babies born now, they're going to be on a whole nother level from the babies who were born as we grew up. Mm-hmm. Right? Because they got a different function. We're going into a golden age, but we first have to get the warriors to still keep the warrior mentality, but be willing to work the firm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, know how to defend the firm so that when one of our firms is in danger, all of the farmers can mount up now because we are farmers. Right. And you know what a male farmer call, right? What? A husband. Mm. So all these women looking for a husband, but they making business deals that don't got nothing to do with finding a husband or a mate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They got everything to do with merging two corporations together so you can be unified and exploited together. Let's go into this spl- exploitation together so they can exploit us twice as hard for twice as long. Mm-hmm. You know, a license is a permission to do something that's illegal. Think about that for a minute. You need a marriage license to get married. Who is illegal to get married? When was it ever illegal for somebody to get married? Mm -hmm. So you need a license to get married. Or it's not recognized. The tribes don't need license, though. We get married by culture. Right? My mama might take this chick's mama uh, 15 blankets. To represent 15 blankets of protection to turn something around off the union. It's political, it's spiritual. It don't got nothing to do with the government, though. But it got everything to do with the people. So when they're looking for a husband, they're really looking for a farmer. 
That's why they kicked us all off our farms with sharecropping agreements uh -huh. to make the men unfit to be a husband because they don't know how to do nothing. Uh -huh. But one of them boys on them country boys on the farm know how to do everything on the farm. Uh -huh. You know, they can butcher the cattle, plant the crops, harvest the crops, repair the house, build a new barn. They know how to do it all. But a city slick only know what the what the people at the job taught him how to do at work. Mm -hmm. Even if he went to school and got a degree. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Damn, Rob, Rob, what you, what you smoking today, man? You just went in for 15 minutes nonstop, man. What that must be some good shit today, man. Hey, look, <laughs> you know me, I stay ready. I gotta get ready. It was just Outformation time for the information that was being relayed. Yeah. No, the question fact. that you asked brought all that to the surface. Mm, mm, mm. Speaking of um farming and crops and, you know, there's specific times that you got to do certain things when it comes to farming. We're talking about the cosmos. We're talking about a new age that's coming, coming along. Uh, Rod, should we be using new clocks do you think eventually we're going to have to implement new clocks as we enter this new golden age right to control the way time is told is to control the way people experience time so it will be up to the collective if they think that we need a new system of understanding time and with the collective feel like the old structure of time is contradictory or counterproductive, then the scientist is going to come up with some miraculous discovery that alters the perception of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We didn't know this mathematical formula, but once we solved it, this happened with the time continuum. Mm -hmm. A new discovery because the collective will demand it. But if, if, if it's fine that it's not nothing wrong with the time continuum, but the management of time within the continuum, that requires the individual to learn how to be a better manager of his own time. Mm -hmm. Right. Then it wouldn't require us to change the clock. We might change calendars more than likely we would change calendars. Because mm -hmm. when a new power or a new... Um, when a new government is established, they have to change the lines of demarcation. The names are what we call metropolises, what they call them capital cities, but they metropolises. The, all of the metropolis have to be renamed by the people of the land. They can either go back to an ancient name or come up with an entirely new name altogether. We already start doing it by nicknaming our city. Um, what you mean? What you mean? What you mean? They don't call Chicago Chicago. They call it Chirac. Right. Okay. Right. They don't call Brooklyn Brooklyn. They call it the Boogie Down. No, that's the Bronx. Boogie Down. That's the Bronx. Oh yeah, the Bronx. My bad. I keep I get them mixed up sometimes because I ain't from New York. Yeah. <laughs> but you you close enough to know how to make the correction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, we do this tribally. Mm -hmm. The tribe from the area becomes dissatisfied with the definition that the city is living up to its name. So in order to change how the, the city is defined, the tribe start calling the city by a different name. Mm -hmm. That's just the nature of the culture. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we don't just call Michigan Michigan. We call it the murder meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. All of these is the tribes being dissatisfied with the current conditions, telling the hierarchy and the chiefdom, fix this problem right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then we had to figure out, OK, well, who is right now controlling the state of Michigan under the name Michigan? We got to go find out who they is and they're going to either explain to us who named it Michigan and why is it still got that name and why we not following none of the tribal um, names for the for the land right right and then when they don't have a sufficient answer then the chiefs pull a rank and well we ain't gonna call it that no more mm -hmm. right that was done by territory but now because we was colonized 
all the way from Canada to the bottom of South America and the islands, even the South Pacific, talking about the Hawaiian Islands, the Samoan Tonga, all of those islands, the colonizers didn't stop nowhere. So now everything had to be reclassified according to the wishes of the people that's from the area. Mm -hmm. If if they want to continue to surrender their sovereignty and allow other people to control their destiny, then the closest nearing people who wants to control their destiny will gladly take on the responsibilities to and get rid of the colonizer. Mm -hmm. So that way that a tribe that don't want to take his tribal spot, you got a tribe that will absorb them to make sure that they be able to live according to the tribal traditions of the great law. Mm -hmm. Russ, speaking of the, speaking of the law, um, down here in this realm on this planet, you know, in order to maintain order, some, we have something called arrest. You arrest somebody when they break the law because you're supposed to be trying to maintain order. Um, speaking of the cosmos and we're analyzing this as above, so below, is there such thing as cosmic arrest? If there's entities out there in the cosmos, is that an aspect that they experience cosmically like we experience on this realm? You don't have to arrest nobody when you get out of the 3D. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the energy goes rogue in the 3D and the vessel that's carrying the rogue energy is informed of it, he's just going to go to the people that can help him correct the negative energy. But some of them so far gone that the energy had to be totally disrupted at source. Oh, okay. When you have to disrupt it at source, they call that splitting the soul because that soul would never uh, reconstitute with that psychology ever again. Yeah. It's like it'll start over from scratch right. as a new soul, right? a blank slate. Mm. Now, in terms of entities that may be what we call negative or um, low vibrational, what's the highest dimension they could go? Because, you know, I hear people talking about this 11 dimension. I hear different numbers for how many dimensions they are. But is there a certain like, like maybe they hang on the third or fourth or whatever? What's the highest dimension a low vibrational entity, um, uh, you know, can go? Well, they come in from, uh, from the mirror lower realms, mm -hmm. but they can only ascend to about the realm of thought. That's fourth dimension mind matrix. Fourth, okay. okay. When you get to fifth dimension spirit matrix, they if they ascend to that point, they whole constitution will rearrange and they will no longer be low vibrational beings. Mm. So that's what you call a great awakening mm -hmm. right so if the higher level being can go to the lower levels and maintain his constitution to a depth that's deeper mm -hmm. in lower vibration then a low vibration being can ascend to heights beyond the fifth dimensional spirit realm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the, which is actually soul matrix where your essence is incorporated into your or paired with your mentality in order to have a um, higher consciousness in the physical. Mm -hmm. How many dimensions are there, Rod? Um, dimensions are infinite. Okay. But from the three-dimensional matrix, the resonance can only go to the 19th dimension. Then it'll turn into something else and start over from there, similar to going back to the three-dimension starting over. But it being so high up, this is the closest we can do to explain it is to try to explain going from 19 back to third, start all over to ascend again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, um, and the lodges is called plumbing the depths to ascend to the heights. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, if you don't hit rock bottom, you can't ascend to the stars. Right, right, right. So, um, a characteristic of somebody that you always know if they into 
masonry is when their life is no longer in their control, they just let it all go. Just let it mm -hmm. fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then they pick themselves up from their own ashes and take the lessons they learned to build a better life. When you go, when you study the information in the lodges and you see what's online, do you think everything that the secret societies had access to is online right now? Or do you think that there's mad shit that the Knights Templar, the Freemasons, the Rosicrucians have that still ain't hit the internet yet? Well, the, they call secret societies, but the more accurate term would be a society with secrets. Mm -hmm. And it's just like your local church and the preachers are sleeping with all the sisters in the congregation. Everybody know it, but ain't nobody saying that. That's called an open secret. Right, right, right. Now, everybody know he... He, he's sleeping with the choir director. He's sleeping with the uh, the lady that take up the collection. He's sleeping <laughs> with the uh, lady that's running the usher board. Uh, everybody in the church know it, but it won't nobody say nothing about it. It's an open secret. It's the same with those secret societies. Some of the stuff that they be doing, we know they doing it because, but won't nobody speak on it. And everybody is complicit in holding the secret. And that's how they make us all be co-conspirators in their dirt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, you know, um, I've heard you and uh, Billy Carson talk about the Anunnaki and, you know, us living to be um, them messing with our DNA. And um, I guess putting a limit on how long we can live at this time putting a cap on the, I forgot exactly how he says they it. They cut back the tail mirrors on the, right. on the them, chromosomes. In and, and ancient times, um, I've heard about people living hundreds, thousands. What do you think is like, what was the longest um, you think we was living in antiquity? Like, was it beings that live hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands? Like, We eternal beings. The physical what, body is... All it is is an animated meat suit. It's just like a suit you go get from um, from Brooks Brothers. Mm -hmm. The only difference is your mama had to knit it in her womb in order to sew your essence into it for you to be able to use it or it won't fit you. It'll come out defective. They call it a birth defect. Mm -hmm. If she make a mistake in the weaving in the womb, we have birth defects. And sometimes you got birth defects because the people that's coming in is so powerful. She don't know how to weave the suit correctly. Mm -hmm. So to keep the power from um, causing too much disruption in the reality around, she give it a broken vessel. Cause they just want to experience this 3D stuff, the pain and the all. Uh, they just want to be here to to revel in the energy, but they come in in that broken vessel. Cause if they come in whole like us, they might come in too powerful for all of the systems that make the system work. Right. And I'm not talking about government systems. I'm talking about the um, the systems of creation. Mm -hmm. The balance and other energies in the families of the humans. Uh -huh. you, you know, you, you just said we're eternal beings. And when you look at a lot of the movies, Rod, the beings that never die, they be miserable. They hate that shit. It's misery to live forever. You they 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 they, they wish they could die. Some of some some of the movies, I think I was watching True Blood, they was trying to do shit just to die. So it's like <laughs> is, is that like a almost like a curse to be an eternal being? Cause that shit is, is listen, that like your listen, boredom or something? That's you know a that's that's an eternal being that's used in three D reality, but it's not an eternal being living in the eternal realm. Mm. In the eternal realm, you don't got no emotions. You don't feel no pain. Mm -hmm. You need a physical body because the emotions is the spirit's navigation system for the three D body. Mm -hmm. right the pain response is that's your warning system that something is wrong with the vessel that you navigate you don't have pain and suffering 
in the spirit realm because it's part of the wiring of the human experience. Mm -hmm. That's why they keep playing these cycles, these games and cycles. Because what do you do for eternity? Would you, okay, now you can cut the grass, you can wash all the dishes, mm -hmm. you can clean up the, all the kids' rooms clean, you mm -hmm. sent them off to school, you, the bathroom clean, laundry done, and now you sitting there twiddling your thumbs for the rest of eternity because you done did everything before 9 a.m. Mm. <laughs> what do you do for eternity? Mm -hmm. You create alternative forms of experience in order for eternity to have meaning, you have to create something called finite. If it's if you have infinite, the infinite being can only understand infinity by the observation of the finite being. Mm -hmm. The being that dies, he don't know that he's just leaving the physical body while he dying, but once he gone. He like, ain't that a bitch? That was a hell of a game. I need to go play that again. Mm -hmm. Let me jump back down here in a different meat suit. <laughs> Let me see if I can find mm -hmm. one of my cousins or nieces that want to be my, my mother this time. Mm -hmm. So we come back into the physical form and Earth has been one of the most, the, the university Earth, because the, the experience teaches you in the end, your spiritual enlightenment comes when you find infinite balance. Right. That means you got rid of all forms of entropy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you conquered chaos. Mm -hmm. So now when you a star, you don't have to worry about going supernova. Right. 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 <laughs> wow. So that's what we is. The consciousness of the human. That's our spirit form is the same power as the neutron star. The mitochondria is the power source. It's the step down capacitor to allow it to be able to seep into the physical without spontaneous combustion. Mm -hmm. But if somebody turned the mitochondria up too high and the vessel have it developed where it can facilitate the tr rapid transfer of spirit to physical energy, it's going to spontaneously combust and you'll have a bunch of scientists talking about, why did that happen? Mm. Mm. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Wow. So let me ask you this, Rod. So if, you know... <clears throat> Infinite intelligence is using finite beings to understand itself. Um, what we do with the finite, what the finite beings do, since we're we we have this forgetfulness, we pray to what we call God for answers. Now, if we pray to what we call God for answers, Rod, does God pray to us for questions to understand who it is? Like, is it a, like a reverse thing? God needs questions and we need answers. So God is praying us for questions. And we praying to God for answers. Is it, is it something like that? God don't ask questions because God don't need answers. That's part of your answer. that's right. part of your 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 physical reality. Q and A is part of being in the three D realm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're born, but you don't come with a manual. But mm -hmm. yes, you do. It's called your book of life. But you don't remember how to read it because it's written in the elements around you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your interpretation of the reality is how you read your book of life. The better you know yourself, the better you read your book of life. That's mm -hmm. your operational manual. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you have to be self-aware. The sooner you self-aware, the more you can do to read your book of life and perform your functions better. Mm -hmm. But the 3D realm we are holding everything from a 3d perspective in our mental states mm -hmm. we're not saying how do god look at this situation if i'm god how would i see this and it starts taking some of the suffering away because it starts to become humorous and then you start to realize i just cracked a joke on myself i pulled a prank <laughs> a long drawn out prank on myself did nobody do it but me because i'm the only person that know me that well Mm -hmm. nobody else don't know me good enough to know that I'm going to look here and this is what I'm going to be looking for when I look here. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one know me that good. So I must've hid it here so I can find it later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And then this is how you picking out your sentences 
in your word selection that writes your book of life. Mm -hmm. You have to know yourself enough to know that the you left yourself clues. Right. You left yourself clues into the exhuming of the self. Now, all you trying to remember is how to find the clues. Mm -hmm. But we lost track of that because they took them all into the secret society, the sciences of how to read the clues at birth. Right. They don't tell us about naming ceremonies and asking the baby they name over and over every day until they tell you where you can hear oh. a clear and coherent name. So we're not it normally to take nine months and the baby will say a name. That's their name. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but normally, you know, that's an old tribal tradition. You know, the old ladies sit around talking about, don't you mark that child? Right. Don't talk bad about people because why you pregnant? Because you're going to mark the child to come out with that negative trait. Mm -hmm. Right. But if you you can mark your trial with positive traits the same way. Mm -hmm. Right. So the the elder women in our community, they've been talking about it in our face the whole time. But we didn't know what they was talking about. They was giving us clues because one day we're going to get it all. We're going to have a big old bag of puzzle pieces. And then we're going to say, well, let me put this puzzle together and see what it looked like. Right, right, right. And that's when the humor of the universe hit you right in your solar plexus and all your pain and suffering was a harsh practical joke that you played on yourself because you was the only person that knew you well enough on how to play that practical joke on yourself while you was playing human. Mm -hmm. to snap you out of this out of the slumber that's some shit bro wow mm. we all in on our part look all of the stuff we go through in our lifetime we know it before we take on the life right right before we come but we forget yeah because we have to mature uh, enough to live the life as the adult but the youth and the childhood is the training for what you're going to be an adult. And if you forego parts of your training, you're going to go back, back over it, back over it, back over it. And it's going to come in a different form until you get the lesson. Mm -hmm. Everybody book a life like that. That's the backflip. Right. You ever hear somebody say, you monkey flipping. That's what they're mm -hmm. talking about. You keep backflipping over the lesson until you get it. Right. But the gurus, the shamans, the swamis, the yogis, the hayokas, they all sit in a room and review the life in meditation until they see where they was learning the lesson and say, oh, that's the lesson. I don't want to live that one no more. So let me mark that off the book. So I won't go through that no more. Mm -hmm. Then you have a test going to come up because you wrote the test. And you the only one well know you well enough to write the test to determine if you are ready to live your best life. Can't nobody write your test, but you can't nobody write your book, but you, mm -hmm. but you can let other people get, make you f abandon your book to help them finish theirs. Right. That's called selling your soul. Ooh. Ooh. You abandon yeah. your book of life to build somebody else's book of life. Mm hmm. You're going to have to go back and fulfill it, even if you have to reincarnate in a different life. You're going to have to, because you made that promise to yourself. Mm -hmm. And the only promise you can't never break is the one you make to yourself, because you're going to find a way to always make sure you deliver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same as lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. You're going to always know you're lying when you told that lie to yourself. So we're sitting in church trying to force ourselves to believe something that we don't believe. Because mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. preacher said it. Who the hell is he? <laughs> What make what he's saying out that book more valid than what I hear in my heart? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they tell us to forego what we hear in our heart to follow what that man told us was in that book. Mm -hmm. They told me that book was the word of God and how powerful God was. I said, then you shouldn't need to open that book to prove it's the word of God. Mm -hmm. Soon as they open it, I take them right to the part that say, that anybody that testify to self testify a lie because they finna take me to the part of the book that says that this is the book of God. 
So if you need to use the book of God to prove to me it's the book of God, it's not the book of God, it's a lie. Because anything that testify of itself testify of a lie. If you can't show who you is in the world around you, it don't matter who you think you is on the world within. You haven't learned to express yourself yet openly. Therefore, you keep yourself in seclusion until you're ready to express yourself openly. Mm -hmm. That's called letting your light shine into the world. Everybody got something to offer. But the societies we live in forces us to forego what we have to offer to the world in order to accept what the world is trying to force upon us. That's the nature of the 3D because you have to have the opposites. Mm -hmm. You got to have the polar opposites, the twin pillars, severity and mercy, the stressor and the buffer mm -hmm. in order to learn the lessons of life. And you mm -hmm. take a roller coaster ride while you learn it. Mm. Mm. Let, let me ask you this, Rod. Does um we're talking about life and what we call death? Does being cremated versus hey, being yeah, that's better. That's way, way better. Okay. <laughs> All right, so so Rod, speaking of life and what we call death, does be let's talk about cremation and being buried. Does that impact um where you go? If we're talking about the afterlife, we're talking about different realms, does that impact where you go or how long it takes you to get somewhere once you leave this realm? Does it imp have an impact on the afterlife? No. So it doesn't matter, like you you would recommend is it you like so. And me, I tell people like this. I don't give a damn what you do with me when I'm dead. Mm. You put me in a box and drop me in the dirt. You put me on here and let the vultures eat me. Either way, I wouldn't give a damn because I ain't in there to, to experience it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? But the reason I say that is when you leave the body and you, you're going to get another meat suit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It might be five years in the future. It might be 5,000 years in the future. Mm -hmm. But you're going to get another meat suit if you choose to come back to Earth. Right. Look, while we here, we kicking and screaming. We ain't never coming back to do this shit again. Until the next time we come back. When you are eternal being to live 50, 60, 120 years on Earth. It's like it's like having recess in, in elementary school. You can't wait for the bell to ring. Damn. You get to come into the and experience stuff that's not part of the spirit realm. Yeah. The physical world is unique in that way. And it was created for that purpose because it was another expression of higher consciousness finding ways for spirit to have something to do for eternity. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> we don't just want to be a beam of light forever right. just floating through the infinite darkness as a beam of light and yeah. never stop no sometimes we want to make a pit stop right Right. we might want to go to the rest stop and grab a bag of chips but when you a beam of light flying through darkness you can't do none of that mm. you can't complain about nothing you got nothing to complain about everything is just in a state of perfection in the spirit realm. So you need something that's imperfect in order to accelerate or enhance or uh, accentuate your experience. Mm. So you come into the physical world blind, deaf, and dumb mm -hmm. to determine if you can awaken in the slumber to your true self. We all know we're going to wake up to our true self at some point. And most of the time in our book of life, the point we wake up is 30 minutes after we so-called die. Because mm. that's when we get to go over all of the joys and the pains. Because ain't no joy and pain in the spirit realm. It's all information. It's just information. It's information. It's just light. But Rod, Rod isn't that kind of robotic? You You... It almost the way you describe the spirit world, it almost seems kind of robotic. Robots don't have emotions, they don't experience joy, happiness, sadness. The spirit realm almost sounds robotic, Rod. Because robots is designed off the beings in the spirit realm. Mm. <laughs> They're not mm. designed after humans. Mm. They designed after the thing, the beings in the spirit realm. They data on Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Right. And they trying to figure out the dichotomy between Kurt and Spock. Right. <laughs> the the robot look artificial intelligence can only go to the uh, fourth dimension and then it breaks down. Mm. That's why artif I'm not. I, w I would never be fearful of artificial intelligence ever becoming to a point where it can take over humanity. That ain't. It happening. can never outthink the God mind. Mm. The, the God mind got, got it's got twenty one dimensional, um, um, uh, it pings the thought pings. Woo. It's an encryption code. The artificial intelligence only got a four bit quantum encryption. The human intelligence is a 21 bit quantum encryption over 19 dimensions. So they can, it, it can never become as wise as the gods when they come into the flesh. He will always outthink artificial intelligence. Mm. All you got to do is cause it to jam an information overload. If you draw from the fifth dimension, you can easily give a, a artificial um, sensory overload to somebody in the fourth dimension because when they come into the third, they're going to say they had a nightmare. Mm. That's an information overload. Mm -hmm. It comes out as you see in the entropy. All of that dark, evil stuff, that's entropy. Right? And all of that beautiful, gorgeous stuff, that's the harmony of unison, the oneness. Right, that's efficiency 100% pure efficiency. <laughs> it's, this is the, it's funny to me because everything I'm saying, everybody notice when they're not in a physical form, but in the physical form, it sounds like I'm talking crazy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. For real, for real, for real, damn. <clears throat> That's like saying if you keep training dogs, one day they're gonna we're gonna wake up and they're gonna be walking us on the leash. <laughs> mm. 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 The, listen, the dog Man. is the dog is the dog needs certain qualities that's not part of his genome mm -hmm. to give him the capability to conquer the human. It's not in his genetic makeup and his genetic code. He might be able to um, attack one of us and eat us up, but he's not finna outthink us. Especially when we know the nature of the canine. Once you know the case, when the human know the nature of something, that thing can't conquer the human no more. Mm. But soon as something is mysterious in nature, it creates uh, that cognitive dissonance, that moment of confusion, and that's when the serpent strikes. Right. But as soon as you become aware of what you're dealing with, man, that shit don't work on you no more. Mm. That stuff don't work on you no more. That's why I had to tell you who put the conjure in play, what the conjure did, how it worked, where it's at, who done it. Because when more of us recognize this, oh, it don't work on us no more. We woke now. <laughs> you put me to sleep with a blood ritual on, on a constitutional mandate with one of the chief's blood because the blood of the righteous not be spilled in blood. It don't work on me no more. Mm. That spell is in, at that point broke. Right. A any spell that's on something only works because they don't understand what it is and the mechanics of it. Your mm. spirit body will automatically protect you when you learn the nature of the spell. Mm -hmm. That's right. part of the free will universe rule. But as long as you in ignorance and you are doing nothing to change your ignorance level, then you allow it to stay in bondage until you decide to wake up. Mm -hmm. Right? Because when you're not in the mental state to lead yourself, you need a shepherd to lead the sheep. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you got the blind leading the blind straight into a ditch. Mm. Mm. Damn, bro. <laughs> it's, it's some it's some deep stuff man it's, some Look, deep. it's not deep though it's real simple it's so it's so it's it seems deep because it's so basic mm -hmm. it's basic understanding from the higher realms that we turn off on purpose because we don't want to offend the rest of the people who ain't woke up yet 
Because we tiptoeing through grandma's house because we got the uncles and aunties in these different rooms sleep. And if we wake one of them up, they're going to come out yelling and that's going to wake the rest of them up. Now, everybody yelling at all the kids. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to wake nobody up. So when we start to wake up, we start to isolate. Mm. We don't wake nobody else up too soon. And the system design is that, wait a minute. Ain't nobody tell you to wake up before everybody else. And it punishes you. Remember Dick Gregory saying, you know what's dangerous is when the universe pick you. Mm. But when the universe pick you, you put these glasses on, you can't take them off. Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 huh? That's, what I say? Huh? 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 What I say? Huh? Hear me? Yeah. Hear me? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm about to dick or something else. <laughs> oh, he, oh, he was something else. Oh, I mean, he was, he was something else, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Shout out to uh Dick Gregory, man. Bless his soul. Um, yeah, let's get to um let's get to some QA from the family. We're gonna do a brief, we at the 50 minute mark. We're gonna do a quick QA. Uh give me some questions. Wow, this is powerful, right, y'all? Um, damn, I had what I had Q Reeves on, then I had Blue Pill, then yeah. It's been the last three days been fire, y'all. Oh man, these brothers been going in the last three, cut three, three, four days. Um Hey, I finally got to uh, link up with Dane Calloway and on um, Legendary Top Cat on the Three Chief Combo. Right, right. Man, so, the people ate that up. But we had such a, a smooth conversation, uh -huh. right? Because we all, you know, we, we don't have a um, fundamental difference to separate us mm -hmm. because we all know what's going on on a different level for regular people. Our conversation is more of where your blind spot at? Oh, I see. This is where your blind spot at. Let me see yours. Okay, okay. that's your blind. So we we enhancing each other's perception. Mm -hmm. This is the purpose of steel sharp and steel. When two men come together, it's like steel sharp and steel. Mm -hmm. But man, we've been on rock. Look, between what you've been doing, young elder been doing, and I've been doing independent. Man, we've been on fire. <laughs> <laughs> we've been on fire super for real fun. we've been on fire the people is starting to see all of the stuff that we've been saying over the last couple of years since me and you first met you've mm -hmm. been doing this half your life <laughs> no facts, facts yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying at least yeah. and then you you the, people don't know brother Rich when you was over there with Sarnetta you sat with some head banging heavy hitters oh yeah oh yeah and they was from both sides of the fence, mm -hmm. right? They come from different backgrounds, different schools of thought. They all swear they right with somebody else's reference. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to argue this man point until you submit. <laughs> <laughs> man, man, oh, man. Wow. But you done been with some big wigs. So you was being trained according to your book of life by mm -hmm. being exposed to the people based on your character mm -hmm. that would allow you to see your vision for yourself and your family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody could call Rich at the wrong time and you ask his phone and say, yeah, brother, I look like to talk to you, but it's family time right now. I'm going to have to catch you later. <laughs> yeah. And nobody, they're not going to never get offended mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of who you are and the way you do your business and the way you into your family, we understand what you're doing. So when you say that, it's like, okay, bro, how when you can? Yeah, no facts. Right, because you got your structure. Yeah. And then you got to sit around people and watch other people do it while you was growing up. You probably was still in high school watching that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most of us don't have that luxury, brother. Mm. Most of us don't have that luxury to sit around the tight... I mean, some of the people that came through Sarnetta went since you was there, man. Man, amazing but, people. I mean, like like James Smalls. That's that one by itself right there. Yeah. Um, the professor, uh, the, the one Tupac called right before he died. Uh, that was James Small, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm thinking about another one um, that was... Professor Cobble? Or Yeah, him too. But all them guys was there. Brother Valentine was there. Del you Delbert got to see them in the early days. Delbert Blair. You got Del to see these people. 
Yo, yo, Rod, Delbert Blair, I'm going to tell you, if you ever met him in person, he had a unique energy to him. He, out of everybody I've met, he felt like an extraterrestrial. He, you know what he felt like? He felt like a beam of light. You know how you go around certain people and they, you know, they, it's, it's a person. Blair felt, Blair's energy, that dude felt like a beam of light, bro. Like he Listen, was light. Dude was light. I bro. didn't know nothing about who Delbert Blair was. When I was about 12 years old, we were staying in this, we was visiting my auntie in Chicago. Um, it was 75th overall off exchange somewhere. Mm. And uh, I, my sister's boyfriend at the time used to always go listen to his lectures. Mm. And one day he brought him home with him. And this was like 80, maybe 81. Mm. And I couldn't stop looking at this dude. And I didn't, I didn't know why I was like, I just can't, I can't take my eyes off him. It was like, he was polarizing to me, but it, remember, I don't know nothing about nothing at this time. Mm. I don't even know who Farrakhan is yet. Mm. Right. But I'm looking at this dude. I'm like, this dude ain't regular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the only thing I could do is, is just compare him to me. I'm like, he, he kind of not regular. Like I'm not regular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So I went to talk to my mom. I said, who was that man? And um, she said, I can't tell you who he was, but just know he was somebody that you needed to see at the time. Mm -hmm. That and then I didn't find out who he was to years, years later. Mm. Yeah. I caught him when I first started. Um, OK, so it's a brother that I was locked up with named Hart Eel. Mm -hmm. Our eel had all of the heavy hitters cassettes. And I used to go through them. And one of them was, I think was uh um Dr. Delbert Blair. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm gonna find this dude when I get home. He in Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. But I didn't get to go to Chicago when I got home because I ended up having to take care of my mama because the day after I came home, she virtually died. Mm -hmm. Sorry to hear that. Right. So she stayed in the coma for like six days. And then, you know, she come out the coma. So I ended up not going to Chicago. So I started researching, looking for him in the internet back then. And I finally found some videos of him, but they wasn't YouTube videos. They was on somebody's website. And I was watching. I'm like, man, this dude right here. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And then I just, I was just on Delbert Blair for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, that was uh, yeah, shit. Like I said, Blair, uh, a lot of them, man. Bobby Hemet, uh, they was just they was uh, Richard King, uh, they was just on the next level, man. But uh, let's man, get to some. Uh, what you what you say, Rod? I love to have met Doctor Richard King. Yeah, I never, I never got to meet him. I never got to meet him. I would have loved that, to have met him. that black dot science. A lot of people don't know that's black root science, black dot science, melanin science, the mm -hmm. science of the nine ether. When you go through Dr. Uh, Carol Byrne, Dr. Rich King, mm -hmm. then you go get uh, Afro Unu, then you go to Jamaica for the Holy Pibby and the Sacred Parchment Scroll of Black Supremacy, and you start seeing that they talk different languages, but it's a key thread to all of this information. This is what they call African root science. It's called a piece of work. Indeed. But Indeed. If y'all want to show some love to the brother Rod... I know you're always asking about the brother's cash app. I know a lot of y'all remember it, but I got to put it on the screen regardless. Um, dollar sign sick. Yeah. S I K A P E dollar sign sick eight. Uh, you want to show love and support to the brother for uh, providing us. Uh, the brother's been rocking with me for about two or three years now. And it's just every single show has been action packed, electrifying, filled with information from start to the end of it. So uh, make sure you show love to the brother Rod Hayes on the cash app dollar sign sick eight. That's S I K A P E. Uh, with that being, yeah, galactic event. Somebody, yeah, yeah. The, the gathering of the masses is a galactic event. That's it. Yeah, that's what it is. It's a galactic event. That's what it is. But uh, let me put this on the screen one time. Let's get to some questions. Um, uh, okay, Rod, is it okay to to have to cut off my parents? Due to my own growth, like they're addicts stuck in abusive relationships, they lack accountability 
and respect, bro. <coughs> Listen. Cut off mama. Cut off big mama, Rod. That's a, that's a hard one. It oh. is. But remember, birds push they, they, they chicks out the nest so they know they can fly. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the behavior of the parents mean go get yourself together. I'll be right back. Go get yourself together and then come back and deal with us later if you have the love for them. But some people abuse be so um, so obscene that we never recover from it to have a functional relationship with those family members. But remember, you relatives by blood, you family by that bond of affection that keeps y'all tied together through thick and thin. You can't be going through the thick and thin with somebody going to leave you every time it get thick. You're going to be the be with me or you're not going to be with me. And sometimes you have to stand on your own two feet in order to control your circle when you become an adult. Your parents got you to adulthood. Their job was done. Now your parents and your association with them supposed to be a luxury for you and for them to see you living your best life in this realm for them to be part of seeing you live your best life. That's supposed to be a blessing to see, but some people burn those bridges. If you can't make it work, you got to do what you got to do, but you can't force around a peg in the square hole. It just don't fit. All right. All right. Um, Let's get to the next question. Peace, family. Since there is no original thought and money is nothing but a collective agreement, is it a violation of spiritual law to monetize universal knowledge? Um, the, the way that the old priesthoods used to work is they never charged what people gave out of gratitude. Mm. Right? This is why I don't charge, but I accept donations. Because the gratitude keeps the energy cycling, right? But you got a lot of people out here charging to do spiritual work because the church has got us used to every time somebody do spiritual work, they have to charge, but you're not supposed to have to charge because of what you offer in the re- revelations of the universal knowledge to other people, they gratitude will compel them to compensate you on their own without you trying to solicit them for funds. Then when the system change over, all them people that have been scamming, their money ain't going to be no good anyway. Money as we know it, do you think it's going to be around um, 150 years from now, 20, 40, 30, 40 years from now, Rod? All the money is, is the way for, if you do something for me, uh-huh. Um, I have to give you something tangible to compensate you for your time and your efforts to assist me in my need, uh-huh. which is a form of gratitude. But it's a way to keep it, uh, keep the communication balanced. Uh-huh. Because some people don't got no skills, but they got a whole lot of currency sitting around. Right, right. So they got to pay the plumber, the electrician. They got to pay the guy to come cut the grass. They got to pay the mechanic to change the tire. All of the stuff that they would be able to do on their own, they have to use currency to get done because they don't know how to do nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is what the society is gearing, cutting us off from what we used to call Uberman or the Superman or the man that was the universal man. Remember that Leonardo da Vinci uh, drawing with the man on the circle with the three arm um, positions? Yeah. Yeah. It's called the universal man. That symbol was symbolizing the man that knew how to do many different things with his hands. Mm. Right. And they each hand from the position is uh, um, it's a code to the work that he did. Right. So he only got two feet when he stood two t- the, the, the Vitruvian man. It's also called the universal man. But this is what the uh, symbol is, the representation of the energy of the man who can do more than 
one or two things, right? To a jack of all trades, the master of none. But the uh, the jack of all trades is better than the master of one. Right. So if you only know how to do one thing, you limit your your value. Mm -hmm. The more stuff you can do, the more value you create within your in your circle. Right. Mm -hmm. So we are everybody know which uncle to call to fix the car, which cousin to call to cut your hair. We we all know that, but we don't know that one person used to do all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One person used to be able to be the barber, the dentist, the surgeon, the mm -hmm. doctor, the lawyer. We used to know it all because it was part of early.